Ruchim Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Today's lecture will be on uh, exercise. And what does exercise have to do with uh, religion? And the answer to that question is quite, quite a bit. There are many similarities that exist between exercise and between religion. Uh, in fact, it's interesting. Statistics have shown that people that um, are, follow religious institutions live an average of seven years longer and are happier. Same thing for those people that exercise. They live longer lives and they're generally happier. It gives them endorphins and everything that they feel better for working out. And maybe the greatest um, connection or, or similarity between the two is, is in whether you're religious or whether you work out every day is discipline. That in order to uh, be able to follow the dictates of God, one has to have discipline. We practice religion and we bring it into the world. And exercise takes the same thing, a discipline. It just can't be helter-skelter in what you do. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, I remember leaving a health club and I had a friend who was walking in as I was walking out. And he looked at me and he smiled and he said, I wish I were you. And I kind of think the same way in a shul, in a synagogue, that people may drag in, but everybody feels better for leaving, that they feel like they've done something. The same thing with a health club. You may not want to go in, but everybody feels better when they're done. And again, it's a great similarity. There's also a the, uh, term that's used for exercise, no pain, no gain. And again, the same thing with religion, that if you are within your comfort zone, then chances are you're just not serving God well enough. And if you're in your comfort zone with exercise, you're not pushing your body. And uh, in fact, not only that, if you're doing the same routine over and over again, you've been doing it for the last 10 years, your body really gets used to it. And what you really need to do is change up. And this becomes very important. Same thing with religion. If what you're doing is exactly what you've been doing for the last 10 years, there's something wrong, you need to add something, you need to change something, you need to grow. And this is the important thing. And again, in a physical sense, we grow by muscles growing, by becoming more flexible, by being able to be faster, whatever it might be. And the same thing in religion on a spiritual level, that we also grow, we get more spiritual muscle, and it helps us to come closer to God. Another comparison between the two is that if you really want to work out well, you need to be challenged. And the way you do that is work out with someone else. And by working out with someone else, number one is you show up and you also work out harder. Same thing with religion. That we believe that everyone that religion should be studied with another person, what we call as a chavruso, a study partner. And through articulating, talking to that other person, explaining back and forth at give and take, you grow getting new ideas and coming closer to God. And this becomes important both in religion and in exercise. Belonging to a health club. Now a person, remember I, uh, I grew up in the 60s and every, everybody, uh, everybody had a guitar in their house. Wherever I went, I played. There was always a guitar sitting there because everybody thought it played itself. And when they started to play it and it didn't, they just put it on the side. So everybody owned one. Nobody played one. And when people, you go to almost everybody's house, they have a treadmill, they have an elliptical, and you have to dust it off, you know, work a bike, whatever it might be, and, and bikes in the garage, <laughs> all of this equipment, but people don't use it. And it's the same, that's why it's good to go to a health club, because when you go to a health club, all of a sudden there's a whole atmosphere that's there. And not only that, and that's the same thing, again, belonging to a synagogue. And that camaraderie that you develop when you go to a health club and you have other people that are working out and you're talking to them, the t passing the time, whatever it might be, and you build up this friendship, which is very important, the same thing in a synagogue. It becomes very important. In fact, people that, uh, athletes, that when they're, they get older and they retire, even though everyone misses the money, I'm sure, but what they really miss is the camaraderie, being part of the team. And that's what, uh, I had a brother-in-law who was saying cottage for his father. And that's what he found. 
that there was a whole clique that was going on, that these same people would come every morning and they'd have a whole routine. And this drew them to the synagogue, to, to services every day, and the same thing to a health club. When you work out, one of the most important things a person can do, and even if you're not, is drink water, stay hydrated. And if you don't, again, it can create great problems, cramps, and everything else that go with it. Same thing when you're learning Torah. Torah is compared to water. That if a person does not, stu does not learn Torah, then becoming a religious, serving God is very difficult. And again, so a person needs to stay hydrated. A person needs to stay up to his the drinking and also ingesting this mayim, this water, which is Torah. As we know, the Torah connected kulam, the studying Torah, it is according to the sages, what we say in the morning every day, is commensurate with everything. It doesn't mean it's the only thing. But if you don't study, then you really don't know what to do. And this becomes very important. Not only that, in, uh, I get health magazines, and they keep coming up with new ideas of how to work out a better workout, a safer workout. And it gives you new ideas. And it also gives you a, a desire either to try it or you find something that fits better for you. Um, again, a person can work out and it's detrimental if you do the wrong things. You need to know exactly what to do. And not only that, it's having a trainer that many people not only to um, give a person the discipline to do it, but at the same time to instruct you and to push you, to give you enthusiasm to, 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 to say, hey, doing a good job. And it's, it's not really important, but it makes you feel better. It makes you want to do more. Same thing with having a rabbi, with having a, a person who you look up to that, you, that will guide you and direct you. And complimenting the fact of what you're doing. We're silly people, but the little compliments make us want to do a little bit better. It gives us a little more energy. So again, both in religion and in exercise. It helps us to, to, to get past our, our, our comfort zone. And that's really what it's always about, going past that comfort zone. And again, learning those new te techniques. Also, as I mentioned, it's very important not to stretch before you begin to exercise. Warm up those muscles. And then after you're through, again, to cool them down and to stretch again at the end. And the same thing in religion, that many people just... They, they fall out of bed and go directly to prayer in the morning or in the afternoon. Then it's better than nothing. But the truth of the matter is a person prays properly. What he really needs to do is get to the synagogue a little bit earlier and say what we call as korbanas, the sacrifices, which is what all of prayer is about, to prepare himself to, for this audience with God. After all, that's what we're doing. So it's not just rushing in the door, but coming in, as you would, stretching, so to speak, in a spiritual sense. And then afterwards, instead of running out, hopefully having a minute or two, to study something, to stretch at the end. So those same things that we do in exercise, that we find the same thing becomes important when it comes to religion at the same time. It's an interesting thing, so why be religious? And same thing's true for exercise. Over 75% of the American population is overweight. So when we talk about when we talk about religion, most people really aren't religious. Well, guess what? Most people aren't working out either. On the other hand, there's a pasuk, there's a verse in Torah, Tanya is based on. It says, "V'kara dava lechem od." This thing is very close to you. Beficha in your mouth, vilvavka in your heart mean in your thoughts, la so so to do it. Which means that people talk about work about being religious. People think about being religious. They just don't do it. But they do talk about it and think about it and they respect people that do. They think it's a great idea for someone else. You know, people tell me all the time, it's like a way well, you dress, let's say they're saying, well, that, that's good style for you. I just not for me. But they think it's a great style. Well, it's the same thing, you know, around New Year's time, where summer comes along and people are going into bathing suits and going down to the beach. Many times a, uh, a kala, a bride, before she gets married, all of a sudden she's got a dress she wants to squeeze into. She'll never be that size again, but for the wedding she wants to get into this dress. Um, it's amazing when you see people 
and you are at their house and you see their wedding pictures and you just shake your head. That's what you used to look like. <laughs> you know, we, we lose the whole thing. But the key becomes is that on New Year's comes along and everybody makes this resolution, just like we do around Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, that we're going to get better, that we're going to work out this year. I'm going to the health club this year. You know, try to get a parking space or get a machine at a health club on the first week after, after New Year's in January, and it's very difficult. By the second, third, and by February, you can park at the front door because people fall back into their old routines because it's, it's difficult. You know, we'd all like to, the truth of the matter is that we'd all like to do is take a pill. You know, just take a pill and all of a sudden I'm going to, you know, have a great body and I'm going to be healthy. Take a pill, same thing, you know. It's like we'd like to pay someone else to come to synagogue and do everything we have to do. Problem is all of these things come with us putting in the effort, doing the work. In fact, there's a saying in Pirkei Elvis that says, Lefi Tzara Agra, according to the difficulty is the reward. So each person on his level. You know, we all don't have to be bodybuilders. That's not what this is about. What it's about is being healthy. Being healthy not just in a physical sense, but also in a spiritual sense of taking on, sometimes taking on too much, too quickly, is actually a negative. Just like when people work out. If you, if you walk in, I remember when I was younger and I didn't work out much, and I would, when I would get into a health club, I would, you know, work out like a, like a madman. Next thing I know is laying on a bench. <laughs> That's ready to pass out, you know. And the next day I couldn't move, you know. Uh, emergency rooms are filled with guys who think they're having heart attack because they haven't worked out all year, and all of a sudden they go into a uh, a health club and they work out, and their chest is killing them. It's their muscles screaming, you know, please, no more, no more. And the same thing that it's not healthy to do that, nor is it good to do on a religious level. That a person really needs to. Space what he's doing, take on things gradually, and not lose them. Because many times the side of evil is telling you to overdo it, to do everything, and then the end result becomes that you wind up doing nothing. The um, it, you know it's really a mitzvah. Believe it or not, it's a good deed to exercise. We see that Hillel, one of the greatest sages that we know, said he was leaving the study hall to go take care of the hotel he was staying in. What he meant was his body. And uh, there was a great individual on his deathbed. Started to cry, and I asked him what he was crying about. And he said that he wished he had been better to his body, just so he could put on fill-in one more time. In order for a person to be able to serve God, you have to have a body that can do it. You can have a mind that wants to. But if your body is not healthy, if you can't bend over, if you can't walk, if you can't get out of bed, you can't serve God properly. So when a person goes to a health club, uh, when, a person, um, when a person eats properly, all of these things, he allows himself to serve God. And he has to have in mind that the reason why I'm exercising is not so that I look great so women will love me, you know, or I'll do better on a dating site or whatever. But the reason is so that I'll have the strength to serve God. I'll be able to serve God with a, with a better mind because we also know that exercise builds brain cells. So same thing for Alzheimer's. All of the things that are important to give a person a strong body and a strong mind, not just to be able to live longer, but to live better and to serve God longer and to serve God better. And that becomes the key. So the two come together very much. And again, if we can take this discipline that we learn both from religion and from exercise and bring them together, what we become is a true Ebed Hashem, a true servant of God. And in this way, we serve God, again, besimcha, with joy. It's very hard to serve God when you're in pain. It's very hard to serve God when, you're, when, when, you, when you can barely walk or, or when things hurt. And that comes from a neglect of the body. You do not own that body. You really rent that body when you come into this world. And it's your job to take care of that body. When you return it back to the rent-a-car place, you have to pay for damages. So the same thing with the body. The body is just a vehicle for the soul. And we need to take care of that body so that the soul has a vehicle that it can use in this world in order to serve God and take care of Torah mitzvahs. Again, hopefully we take this to, to heart. And again, we treat our bodies better. And this way, we'll be able to serve God better on a stronger level. Thank you very much for coming. God bless. Stay healthy.